Just wanted to kind of give you guys a little idea of what the before looks like on this dresser. We're going to have to do some repairs on this here. It's got a little hanging cupboard in there. And then one of the corners on the drawer face was completely missing. So I've gone and bondoed that. That's drying now. And when that's done, I'll shape that down so that the corner's not missing on that. Jimmy's going to be doing some decoupage on these drawer faces. So I'm going to paint those white and I'm going to paint this door white. We may leave the door off because it's got this cool little hanger here, but we haven't decided yet. And then the base of it's probably going to be getting painted apothecary. I'm going to go ahead and get this painted and then Jamie's going to give you a detailed walkthrough on the napkin decoupage method that she's going to use on this. So a fun little tip for spraying when you don't want to get a bunch of overspray in your drawer you just flip it over on the edge of the table here and that keeps most of the paint if not all of it from going up in and getting overspray on the inside of your drawer where you don't necessarily want it so i've just got the lip here i'll paint that from the bottom and then get the whole thing painted up and i won't get any inside my drawer I've got some 80 grit sandpaper loaded up on the random orbital and I'm gonna get ready to shape this Bondo. It's cured and hard now and I'm making sure to wear my respirators so that I don't get that Bondo dust in my lungs. So to achieve this, I just used this Bondo all-purpose putty, and you can pick this up down at most hardware stores. Home Depot for sure has it. That's where I get mine, and they even sell it in a gallon if you need a ton, if you got a big project that you got to do a lot of shaping and things on. All right, so now for the fun part, we've got our napkins. I know you're going to ask. I purchased them on Amazon, and I do not have a link because I bought them a long time ago, but if you just type in paper napkins on Amazon, a bunch is going to come up. Usually I add floral because that's what I'm looking for and there's a pretty decent selection. You could also go to Ikea or your party store or maybe even like Target would carry them. Most of the time they are three ply. But these, I have used them a lot. They are only two ply. It's really important that you get all the extra plies off. So make sure whether it's two or three ply, if you don't get down to the bottom layer that's super see-through, you're not gonna actually be gluing on the right part and then it's gonna look kind of funky, so. So I'm deciding how I'm gonna lay these out. And if, cause I'm gonna distress the edges. So if I lay them like this, I can actually get a whole drawer with one napkin. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle and then I'm gonna move this part over here. So I'm dry fitting my pattern, deciding which looks the best. And they don't have to line up exactly, but I kind of like. I don't know. Decisions, decisions. I kind of like that. I'm gonna cut that right there. The nice thing with napkins, they're pretty forgiving. So this is my liquid patina and I'm applying it with a foam brush. You can purchase that, this at jamierayvintage.com. It's a decoupage, top coat, and transfer gel all in one. You could also do this with Sweet Pickens top coat. I'm just out right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. You wanna apply it liberally underneath. I kind of want to get on there as smooth as possible. And I'm going to post a link below to the tutorial from Sasha. She's who I learned this from. She's probably got a little bit better information. She's done it a ton. Alright, I'm going to make sure my seam is nice and here. 
So now I'm doing the other side, and then you just want to make sure they're getting there's like no seam. It's even better to overlap than it is to like have a funky seam. Gotta be careful because it tears. Luckily, we're gonna sand it, so it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so now that it's on there, the next thing you're gonna do is take more of the liquid patina and you go right over the top. It's gonna wrinkle a little bit and that's okay. Don't freak out. That's just the nature of the game. Make sure you get all around the edges. Okay, so I'm just going to peel this off of this side. And then when it dries, I will um, sand that and get rid of it completely. And then also once it dries, I'm gonna do one more coat of liquid patina. Then I'll do all my sanding and then I'll finish with another coat of liquid patina. And because liquid patina is also a sealer, there's no need to do like an additional top coat over that. By that point, you'll have three coats and you're gonna have more than enough to protect it. All right, so they're all dry. They have, you can see they've got a little bit of texture to them. That's totally fine because when I sand it, it'll smooth it down and then this will kind of look like a crackled effect. I'm just using 220 sandpaper on a block. You could use a 220 sanding block. This is just what we have. And I'm just gonna go around the edges and then over the top. So when you're all done, it should feel smooth to the touch. It's gonna to feel a little papery, but we'll put a few more coats of sealer on it. And you can see I, I lost a little bit of the napkin there, which is fine. There's a few spots. And then everywhere where it was kind of raised, you've got this really cool crackle. And it turned out pretty amazing. So we'll do this to all the drawers. We'll give the whole piece a distress and we'll get it sealed. All right guys, it is all complete. Zeb, I think did pretty good at his paint job there. And the napkins. The napkins turned out cool. Yeah, I shouldn't say pretty good. He did a good job. He's good at the spray and the brush. He's really good at everything. It should be Zebra Vintage. And no, occasional. that's why you got me sitting over here in the corner. I'm like in the timeout chair. <laughs> so we used DIY products on this. We used Apothecary, yeah. White Swan, mm -hmm. and uh, Liquid Patina. And you could use um, Sweet Pickens Top Coat too, like either one would work, but we used Liquid Patina because that's what we had. You can buy those all at jamierayvintage.com. The napkins I ordered off of Amazon, I don't have a link, but if you just go to Amazon and type in like floral napkins, you should be able to find it. I'm hoping soon to set up an Amazon store and all my favorites will be on there. Yeah, you know, just, we'll put the links for that once it's all set up. And you Someday. Like, oh, when I have happens. like 20 minutes to myself, I'll set up an Amazon store and then you can go there and see all this stuff I order every day. I she have. has 20 minutes every evening when she's doing all this ordering. She just doesn't want to do it because she doesn't like computer work. Hey, I ship a lot. <laughs> yeah, and what does it make you? Grumpy. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. But what doesn't make me grumpy is this dresser. It turned out super duper cute. It was like on my friend's driveway, well, porch, covered porch forever and never used. And now it can be used in like a guest room for extra storage. It'd be super cute in a little girl's room for dress ups. Yeah. Um, they could put all their little shoes in the bottom. The hardware was on the piece already. Uh, it looks just like your standard glass hardware. I'm not really sure where they picked it up. Zeb did a few minor repairs and now it's good for a new home. Be sure to stay tuned because Zeb's gonna include all the close-ups and glamour shots. Subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.
Why are you wearing a hoodie? Are you cold? I just have a pink shirt on underneath. Oh, you don't want anybody seeing you in your work clothes? They've I never seen I, that before. You know, I have to zhuzh it out so that I don't get the... We're working on that. I'm getting so tubby.